also we have uh, the start one which starts the CPUs the start function takes what IDs what CPU IDs it needs to start it also takes a stack pointer each CPU needs a stack that is currently a locked dynamic dynamically also the default entry the first function that will be executed and the number of CPUs that need to be started this may change the order of the arguments then we have the functions that interact with the started CPUs the wait one which waits for the given CPUs to reach the halted or stopped state it's like a barrier and run which sends a function that needs to be executed by one or more CPUs this run function can send those fun those functions that need to be executed in two ways one is the regular interrupt using the ACPI and the other one is a non-maskable interrupt uh, which is still using ACPI but it's different in a way all both interrupts currently work why are there two of them? Uh, the, the regular one is slower is parsed slower and can be masked so we decided to include also the non-maskable interrupt for debugging and okay. critical stuff that oh. needs to be done exactly at that point and can't be masked by I don't know the user the programmer Okay, to activate uh, SMP support, we go to menu config, under platform configuration, platform interface options, and we select a number of CPUs higher than one. Currently, if I select a number higher than one, I can see the platforms Linux, U and Xen, because they don't have the support for SMP. If I let it one like now, I see all three platforms. But if I put 12, my maximum number of CPUs on my laptop, I can only use the KVM platform. Make, I already built it. Currently, the output is ugly but I will show it to you because we don't have synchronization at the printing level those hellos resulting from the interrupt show everywhere this is the function that is executed by the CPUs which is sent with the run function as part of this structure that encapsulates the function that needs to be executed I just print hellos and they all pop everywhere but to prove it works I will count the hellos and you can see there are 44 hellos 11 executions 4 times What's happening after a CPU runs the, the function? I mean, it goes into some sort of knob, holds what's happening afterwards. After the function that is given is executed, it holds. And I detect that hold state with the wait after it. Okay. And, and this wait is needed because if I send those functions without the wait, it will do some nasty things make it 
it doesn't catch all the interrupts. Okay. So what, send, uh, what you're doing there, uh, what, the, the, you're, you're targeting the same CPU? Yeah, but the, those NMIs, those two NMIs mm -hmm. with the flag one cancel each other. So only one of them will be executed. That's why we have 33 interrupts here. So for now, it's a good practice to have a wait before after, not before, after each run. Okay, we will see if you need to change it. Okay. And w basically when, when a CPU starts executing, I mean, w after you boot it, it is, uh, what is its state? It's kind of in a waiting for interrupt state for the first, uh, for the first scheduling. I mean, at the very, uh, let, at the very let beginning. Let me show you the default entry which is defined here. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. The default function, the first one that is executed by the CPU when it wakes up, mm -hmm. enables the interrupts because apart from the waking up one, the startup interrupt, it cannot receive any other interrupts. So I need to enable the IP for the CPU and also I need to initialize the traps, enable software interrupts, and then I hold it. This is what happens with the CPU if after it's woken up. After that, it stays in the hold state until the run function sends it an interrupt using the ACPI here. These two. And, uh, and those interrupts wake it from the halted state. And uh, uh, the uh, number of cores UK Platel CPU count. So the, uh, is this provided via the ACPI, the number of CPUs? It's provided by uh, the function, where it is, count. For the count, for the number of CPUs that are present on the system, we need to pass the ACPI tables, mm -hmm. the multiple AP description table. And in that table are all the CPUs present. They are described if they are enabled, if they can be woken up, things okay. like this. But I mean, this is kind of the physical CPUs. If you are, for example, to only allocate two CPUs. No, all, all uh, the APIC doesn't make a difference between logical and physical CPU. Mm -hmm. I have six physical CPUs with two logical cores. No, no, and no, 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 I'm not talking about, I'm, 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 I'm talking about being able to allocate a subset of CPUs to a given virtual machine. Yeah, you, you can do that in Kimu. And, and then here yeah, with the parameter yeah, SMP. If Kimu does that, then that's then visible, I mean, uh, the, the, SA, the ACPI is virtualized by, by Kimu. How is that? How does that happen? Yeah, the ACPI table is generated by Kimu, oh, okay, and the APIC is virtualized. Got it. Got it. Each virtual machine has a virtu virtualized APIC, and the virtual CPUs that are provided by Kimu. Okay, uh, one other thing, when the start function runs, it executes some code from this specific address. It's the only one that is available under one megabyte into the code section, so we needed to place it there. It sets the interrupt stacks, we needed change the thing with the interrupt stacks. Each CPU needs an interrupt stack and that increased the RAM used by Unicraft, not by much, but increased. And I think this is all, all the important stuff. I'm not sure if I missed anything.
Does anyone have any questions regarding the current API and implementation? Nothing from my side, I think it's so clear. Anyone else? All right, so uh, this is the uh, uh, this is uh, generic. Ah, oh, no, this is the HTTP implement implementation of it. This is the the set of uh, items that Mark going to review, right? Yeah, the right. generic one. I think it's here. Uh, okay. Those are the generic ones. Mm -hmm. And, and basically, the, schedu the, to... the scheduler mm -hmm. is at one point going to. I mean, the, 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 well, the scheduler is going to use what function is that UK plat uh, CPU run something to schedule a Yeah, those, those defined by lcpu.h, those here. Mm -hmm. Wake up, run, wait, start. All right. Yeah. Count and ID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those will be the exposed functions to the scheduler. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions from uh, from anyone? Any other questions? Right. Uh, if not, then uh, thank you so much, Christy. Uh, I record this. I'm going to also upload it now that we uh, we are in the process of uploading everything on the on the YouTube channel, and uh, then anyone can take a look at it.